America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. The entire world wants. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for man. And humanity saw that the sky was not the limit. Achievement. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Do you like to meditate? Have you tried to meditate? Have you struggled with meditation? Why don't you visit one of the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center? Visit brahmakumaris.org. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? My neighbor. Mr. Rogers passed along friendship, hoping we would too. Friendship. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Are you in need of a tech service company that's going to deliver the best solutions for your business? Then Atronica is your solutions headquarters. Here we specialize in your individual needs to make sure your business shines. For more information, please call 301 301- 417-0070 or visit us at our website at attronica.net at Tronica, where we deliver for you. In this meditation, I invite you to become aware of the two types of consciousness that reside within the soul. Let us choose the consciousness of light over the darkness of past stories, the history that gets into our way. Let us now remember our connection to the Supreme Energy, the Supreme Soul, the Being of Light. For far too long, we have allowed the external forces to dictate our inner force. And at this time, I choose to get off the grid and step inside the heart to be myself. I choose to no longer be under the influence of what the world tells me, what my parents have told me, my spouse, friends, or anyone who has been a negative influence in my life. In this meditation, I stand strong in the original, eternal, imperishable worth of the soul. I, the being of light, the soul of power I step into the heart and I become a being of love a being of light and goodness Hello and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and we're broadcasting from the beautiful Meditation Museum. And I hope you loved that track, Off the Grid, Into the Heart by yours truly. I specifically made that um, in that recording because I really felt that we were being so bombarded and so overwhelmed by so many things that were going on in the country and in our world and we're constantly seeing that. We're looking forward to releasing Meditate the Vote on May 1st. It starts up until voting day November 8th. I got a lot of interesting emails and text messages of friends from around the country about the win in New York and I'm again everyone please know I'm not taking any party lines or any side. Whatever I choose to do will be my own and it has no influence in pushing whatever one side or the other. My role in 
advocating or using Meditate the Vote as a conversation tool is to more qualify us as people and to know that it's not a leader that's going to really make our lives work. We are going to make our lives work. And if we happen to bring in office a leader that supports our vision of who we are, who we have become as a people, it's important. But a friend of mine sent me a very interesting article about Donald Trump's um, strategist resigning from her post and sharing that it was really like a ride And I don't know how authenticated the story is, but it was in the Post and in other newspapers where it was like basically saying it's not that he really wants to be president. It's just that he really wants to stimulate a sort of a dialogue or openness about the system can't keep running the way that it has. And that leaves sight for a lot of conversation. And this is why Meditate the Vote is so important. And so for all of you that's listening on the air and for anyone who really wishes to invest in a better conversation, conversation, a better self, a better country, please, can you help us on this one? Go to our Facebook or Twitter, which we've just started. I think they say search for Meditate the Vote. Use the hashtag Meditate the Vote. And there are four key questions that we offer individuals to engage in. And we would love to get videos of you sharing, I meditate the vote because I believe in constructive conversation, so to speak, like I would do my video on that today. And also on the America Meditating YouTube, you'll get very nice videos that the youths and other individuals from around the country have put together expressing their interest and their passion for conversing. I have initiated in the last 18 years that I've been in Washington, D.C., 16 nationwide major projects. Each one has always seemed quite important and impactful for me. And each time I find myself playing a role inside of them or with them, I can't help but know that I'm contributing constantly to the greater picture. And one day, just one day, we'll wake up and we'll be more kinder with each other and loving and considerate. And speaking about kindness, we have the wonderful Kelsey Grinowich, who will be joining us on the air in conversation. And I'm going to be talking to Kelsey in maybe about two or three minutes before I get Kelsey on the air Let us have our point of focus and relax our minds from the just a minute meditation. Breathe in deeply, relax. Point of focus. Taking just a minute. Gently, I bring my energy away from the external. I bring all my attention up through my body to a point in the middle of my forehead just above and behind the eyes towards a single point of focus inside. I now look through my eyes as if they are windows. I am a still point of awareness looking through the eyes to the world out there. I am the still point, silent and powerful. Welcome back. The America Meditating Radio is really privileged to welcome Kelsey Grinovich. Kelsey is the Communications Director at the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting kindness in our world through Random Acts of Kindness, Kindness Stories, educational programs, and a whole lot more. Today we welcome Kelsey on the America Meditating Radio to discuss the importance of kindness and the wonderful work that the foundation is doing to make our world into a better place. Kelsey, you must be like one of the luckiest people in the world to be doing something for kindness. Hi. <laughs> I, hi, good morning. I definitely feel very you know, appreciative of being able to work at the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation and just consistently on a daily basis. And I think it's probably the same for you in a lot of ways of the content of your show, of being able right. to focus on the positive and hear stories, you know, of gratitude from others or really those pay it forward opportunities. And it flips your perspective a lot. And, uh, you know, the things that I focus on on a daily basis have changed since working here. 
That's so true, Kelsey, because, you know, as much as sometimes we hear things that seem quite negative or not so on the up and up, if it wasn't for that, I wonder what I'd be doing, because would I be talking about America meditating? Would I be inviting people to be a little bit more reflective and conscientious in the way that they're living? No. And so I'm sure we're both learning the importance of the both acts of consciousness and how each one is somehow supporting each other in one way or the other, as strange as that sounds. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. That's a really good point. You know, everything's in a balance. And, you know, like you said, the positive on the side and helping to bring that focus and awareness about kindness and compassion to others exists because maybe it's not the norm right now. And so Mm -hmm. it all works together. I don't know if you were on the show earlier, but I was sharing about a new initiative we're about to launch called Meditate the Vote. And again, it doesn't take party sides. And what we need is to just raise the quality of conversation. It's up to you, whoever you choose, to put into office or not. But at the end of the day, you're still responsible for taking care of your well-being and your sense of self-worth. And so we've got these questions that we want to engage people in to really begin to amplify the quality of our country. And I'd love for you to help us on that as we move along. Talking about work and kindness and good deeds, tell us about this foundation and how it actually actually got started because I know the random act of kindness. I remembered, I think I must have been in my 30s when I first started to hear about this. I know, mm-hmm. I seem maybe a little bit older, young. Oh, no. But it has just grown into something so beautiful. Could you tell us a little bit more about the foundation, how it got started? Absolutely. It's a good question. It's an interesting start. So in the 90s, there was a summer of violence that happened in California, in Northern California. And there was a phrase that everyone started to use. Everyone was talking about random acts of violence. And it became, you know, a tagline in the media. And there was one journalist named Ann Herbert. This is the story. We and Most people say this is how it happened, but there are there's talk out there that It was created another way, but there was a journalist named Ann Herbert who she wrote down on a napkin random acts of kindness and senseless acts of beauty instead of what everyone was saying. And she's like, what if we focus on random acts of kindness instead of random acts of violence? And that Mm -hmm. started to be used in the media and it was really beautiful. And a foundation was born out of that where people were just sharing their stories of random acts of kindness. And then our chairman Mm -hmm. were privately funded through an endowment. He bought that foundation and brought it out to Denver, Colorado, where we are now. And we've been around for about well, 16 years now. And we really focus on inspiring others to practice kindness through our online content. We have a kindness ambassador community online as well. And then we also have a program for schools. It's free, it's evidence-based, and it's K through 12, you know, really trying to help students and teachers see kindness as a skill that can be taught and something that's just as important as math and reading and, you know, the culture of a school is essential to how it functions. And so that's, we offer that as well. Tell us a little bit about the Kindness Ambassadors uh, program. How does someone get elected or involved with participating in that? Yeah, so our Kindness Ambassadors are called Ractivists. So it's R-A-K, it's like activists and then R-A-K for random acts of kindness. And they're really people who genuinely practice this every day and they do believe that love and kindness is something that can help the world become a little bit more positive on a daily basis. And so we have people from over 87 countries, ages 14 to 89 years old, and there's over 3,000 people. And how you join is if you go to randomactsofkindness.org and you click on the Ractivist tab, you can just apply right there to be a Ractivist. It's pretty simple. And then you join the community, and really what that means is you participate in monthly kindness missions. So the one that we just had for this last month was focusing on bees because the bee population is declining, and it was, you know, how we can help with that. So we'll do something like that that seems a little bit outside of random acts of kindness, and then we'll do other acts of kindness of collecting socks, or we'll do a social media shout-out where we get a lot of activists together to just send kind messages to random people on social media. So it's all different kinds of stuff, and it's really – there's a Facebook community that – these 3,000 plus people can be a part of. And it's really beautiful. Now my Facebook feed is just filled with positive messages and things that people are doing on a daily basis because I'm a part of that community. And so it's just really helping to 
shift what you're focusing on and to be able to connect with like-minded people. Mm, I love that, and we need that positivity definitely in social media more than ever before. That's nice to know because... I think there are a lot of people who want to be at least seen or heard because they're doing so much good. I'm remembering an uh, an elderly lady. Her name was Moy Kelsey, and Moy was a mother from Guyana, uh, had raised her her daughters, and she used to go to school to pick up her granddaughter. And you know what Moy's kindness was? She's passed away now. It's been about seven years. But I always remember Moy because she always took an apple and she cut the apple perfectly because when she went to the school and picked up her granddaughter, there would be all her friends of her granddaughter there, and she would every day give them a piece of apple. It's just a small story, but it's so significant. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think it really is, you know, if we do small intentional things like that daily, big things can happen. It creates a domino exactly. effect, and it's a yeah. beautiful so example of it. Personally, It is. Personally for you, what is it that's making you so dedicated to this particular work? Because sometimes, and I'm not saying this is for everyone, but sometimes it gets daunting because as much as we're involved with something good, there's also bureaucracy, there are personality issues, there's funding. Mm -hmm. There is sometimes, you know, hearing negative stories that you you can feel the impact like Boko Haram, like all of that that's going on. And I always Mm -hmm. feel whatever happens halfway across the world. Ecuador just had an earthquake. It still impacts me because you're still my brother, you're still my sister. Um, What is it that keeps you going, Kelsey, along the path, and why have you stayed so passionate so far? Yeah, I think, you know, it initially started, I had great role models growing up of just parents who really practiced this. And I had teachers in my school, and I didn't even realize it at the moment. But now looking at everything we do at our foundation, I realized I was surrounded by people who live with this intention of being kind and that, you know, paying it forward is just a part of life and that kindness is universal and it's something that connects all of us. And so I had that as a foundation going into this and then actually just working here. I mean, genuinely the small acts of kindness, like we were just talking about those small stories, we have so many people that will write in and tell us about how kindness impacted their life and that, completely keeps me going. I just keep that in mind. I, one great story, there was a 15-year-old girl who she's now part of our activist community, and she wrote in and said why she wanted to be a activist was because the year prior, she was planning to go home and commit suicide, and she just felt very disconnected from everybody around her and that she didn't belong. And on her way home, while she was walking, a girl stopped her and there's a rip in your skirt. Do you want to have my jacket to wrap around your waist? Like it was, I'm not sure how big the rip was. And she said that that girl just noticing her and offering up her jacket, it's a small act, you know, it didn't take any money. It just took five seconds and being able to be aware of the people around you completely changed her perspective. And she didn't go home and commit suicide. And she decided she wanted to be that person for others of just being able to be aware of opportunities to give back. And I just thought, Beautiful. like, how amazing, it, because I think it can seem daunting when there's so many things going on in the world and you start to get this compassion or empathy mm-hmm. fatigue where you just don't know where to start. And I think that right. what I found from working at the Random Acts of Kindness Foundation is that an easy place to start, like a Random Act of Kindness doesn't, everybody can do it. It doesn't matter what you have. You know, you, the phrase I like to say is that do what you can with what you have where you are. So just looking at where you are right now, is it in your car? Is it in an office? Is it at home? And then looking at what do you have? Do you have a smile? Do you have $5 to pay for someone else's coffee? Do you have, you know, writing skills where you can write someone a thank you note, whatever it is. And just being able to Mm -hmm. do one of those things every day, I think, you know, you genuinely feel the impact and others feel the impact and it's scientifically proven to help. There's a, I don't know if you've heard, there's a, you do an act of kindness. It can affect both you, the giver, the recipient, and then someone who happens to witness the act of kindness. They've shown actually gets the same effects of, you know, their good, feel good chemicals going up of the serotonin and oxytocin and all of that. And so it's something simple like that actually can make a big difference. 
Oh, yes, scientists are definitely proving that just kindness and appreciation is rates one of the highest level power and strength in everybody in terms of consciousness Mm -hmm. or in sense of being. If you can live your life, they call it gratitude, kindness, Mm -hmm. appreciation. Mm -hmm. All of that actually keeps your level of awareness at a high level of functioning and optimization. Something that you said I liked, and this is, you just hit something for me where I would love to have you or the random act of kindness where folks from our radio show or from our website can keep doing what you just said. It's an easy way to start because a lot of people keep saying, I want to do good. I want to be of service. I just don't know where to start. I want to volunteer my time. But this is it. It starts right here. It's an easy way to just write a note to somebody, to give somebody a blessing card, to, to send a note out on your Facebook. I think that's it. It's just easy to just start Mm -hmm. being kind Mm -hmm. and I think that's quite beautiful because everyone's now so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. about doing anything they want it all very easy I think folks are looking for easier ways to just Mm -hmm. express themselves thank you for that and we want to see in what way we can support you to expand that story from our show which does great too your website you're offering free lesson plans that educators can use to teach kindness in classrooms which I think is huge and it's a lot of it is rooted in social and emotional learning. And I am concerned, and I haven't found the answer yet, Kelsey. I don't know where we're going in terms of the future with our children and their overwhelming ability to acclimate themselves to technology. And I don't mm-hmm. know how that's relating on a very personal human level. Like everybody knows, whoever knows us here, I'm not good at social media, but you need something and you're going to get it. In other words, the human Mm -hmm. relationships Mm -hmm. behind the scenes is really what's important for me. But with our kids, how can we actually help them to build stronger relationships? And is this program that you're offering online something that can help them to be a lot more personable between their exchange with each other and people? Yeah, it is. I think that you know, whether you're talking about face-to-face interactions or social media interactions, it all comes down to relationships and how we learn to interact and connect with one another. And so our lesson plans actually are built on the idea that kindness is a skill that can be taught. And like you said, it's in this framework of social and emotional learning. And so we look at key skill sets that are under the umbrella of kindness and social emotional learning. So gratitude, self-care, compassion, those kinds of things. And our lesson plans each focus on those topics and provide opportunities for teachers to align it. You know, the we have a lesson plan that's talking about peer pressure for eighth graders, and it's actually aligned with a science activity where it's this whole thing about pulling a egg into a bottle using fire. And so it's actually, you know, it's combining the two together. But what it's really helping students and the teachers to understand is, you know, starting from a place of kindness or being able, a lot of kids said one of the things that they learned from our program is having perspective and being able to put themselves in somebody else's shoes. And I think if you have that ability alone, then that helps with any interaction you're having. So if you're connecting on social media, and you go to comment on something, but you're able to understand maybe if it's going to be a negative comment, putting yourself in that other person's shoes, or if let's say somebody did a ne- you know negatively commented on your photo or something like that, you know just being able to take a step back and assess really you know maybe people that put negative stuff out there they're actually going through something difficult themselves and having that awareness and our lesson plans really help teach that and you know social media and technology is around it's a thing and I think if we can utilize it you know it's still interacting among people and it's still a social way to connect that if we can utilize it for good instead of the negative side of it then we can do a lot Mm -hmm. like you know the fact that classrooms now can through the internet connect with a another classroom in an entirely different country and being able to mm-hmm. like that in itself allows students to be able to relate and have a bigger picture of what's going on in the world and I think there are a lot of programs out there um, including our kindness in the classroom curriculum that focus on that side of things and it's just uh, what schools have said is it's given them a common language to use in their school mm-hmm. and it you know and so whether you learn the concepts of you understand 
what kindness means or what gratitude means. You know, the students actually keep each other in check in the classroom after they use our lessons. They'll say to one another, like, you know, that wasn't really respectful what you just did. We'll have teachers say that all the time, and the teachers are like, I can't even believe my students just called out, like, another fourth grader telling them, like, that's not how we act here. That's not what the culture is like at the school. So it definitely mm-hmm. helps, and like I said, it's all rooted in evidence. Mm-hmm. You know, as you're talking, I actually see it being a regular or like a, a television show because it could encourage kids so much more to just see themselves at a much more meaningful level. And I really recommend that you consider that. I think it's very powerful. It's mm-hmm. a great idea. Mm-hmm. I What you just said reminded me of um, there's one kindness advocate that we've worked with who he's really great his name is Houston Craft and he goes around and speaks at schools and he has this amazing ability to connect with students and the staff members and one of the things that he talks about is this idea that um, I just saw it on his Twitter feed he said students don't want to be involved they want to feel important So he was talking about it from a level of like, oh, we need to involve all the kids here or the kids thinking they need to be involved in extracurricular activities. And his whole, you know, the focus was on having everybody feel like there's one person in that school that thinks they're important and that they belong. It goes to a little bit of what you were saying of just it's how people see themselves or how people connect with one another and in the school. And, yeah, if you have a program like this or something, or you just decide, you know, this is what we're going to focus on and you intentionally include it in your assemblies or your lesson plans or, you know, the posters and stuff that are on the walls, it can definitely change a culture of a school. It's so true. Kelsey, thank you so much for keeping this random act of kindness going and making it such a powerful tool. I know it seems subtle, and the beautiful thing about something that is subtle, the rumbling of a volcano, the fact that it's kind of having these mini eruptions inside, it's protecting the bigger one from happening. But if it doesn't rumble at all, then you know there's going to be some big eruption happening in a volcano. And Mm -hmm. so what I'm feeling is that it's so subtle and that it's creating this ripple that eventually at some point you'll just see this beautiful fragrance of just consideration of people's feelings along the way and I don't I know sometimes for those of us in this sort of area I don't know if you do but I know sometimes I wish like everybody was just okay but it's not that way it's not written that way so I do come back to reality but for the ones that's okay and that you had a finger of cooperation in making them okay it's well worth whatever we go through to keep positivity in the atmosphere so thank you so much for your contribution Before I let you go, could you share your favorite life quote that you're living by and any latest updates that you would like our listeners to know that you need them to know about Random Acts of Kindness Foundation and leave us with definitely a website. And do feel free to come on the air whenever you've got any new release of something going on that we do want to talk about and get everyone to know more about how it's doing and what it's up to. Thank you. I think actually one of the quotes that I have been following lately, we mentioned on the show, it's um, if we do small intentional things with love daily, big things can happen. And it's like what you were talking about, that rumble. And Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, our website, so it's www.randomactsofkindness.org. You can find ways that you can get started yourself. And we even have, we just put it up of in May, there's a lot of these fun holidays that are going on, meaning Teacher Appreciation Day is on May 3rd. And then we have Receptionist Day on May 11th. There's a number of them on there, but we list ways that you can do things for others on there. There's a five-minute thank you note template that's just, you know, fill in the blank that you could really easily do for somebody. And if you go to randomactsofkindness.org or visit us on social media, it's also Random Acts of Kindness on Facebook. And then on Twitter, it's at RAK Foundation. Um, you can get a daily dose of inspiration and things to fill up your soul with kindness and positivity. And then also actually ways to take action and stories of kindness that are happening from around the world. And I, right now, we don't have any big initiatives going on other than just joining our Facebook community. We have almost a million people on there now. And then just people being able to sign up on our website to be a activist or a kindness ambassador and to join that like-minded community of people who are doing things very intentionally and being able to connect with one another. Well, that's so nice to hear that. I'm so glad that's doing well. Kelsey, thank you so much. From the Random Acts of Kindness 
and hope to have you in Washington, D.C. to share a little bit more about the work that you're doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You're welcome, Kelty. Take good care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. So you hang in there when it's really positive and good, and if you ever feel like you're in need of fulfilling your purpose, and your need to do something of charity, it's as easy as just writing a note to someone. It's that easy to be kind. And Tony and I were having a conversation when we were out this morning that even if somebody is not kind, then what do you do? How do you respond? It's different when you're not kind. But when somebody else is not kind to you, why does that create a reaction within you? And so to see in what point or in what way we can still keep looking out for our beings and making ourselves as close to God's divinity as we can possibly get there. Hope you've enjoyed our conversation. Uh, please remember randomactsofkindness.org. And like we close every show, you know, we are here to love each other the same. And it's not in someone's hands to keep me happy or make me happy. It's in mine. So um, give no one permission to take away your happiness, my dear friends. Please look out for Meditate the Vote. Go to Facebook or Twitter, please. We want to build the social conversation there. And maybe your life question today is, are you powerful enough to effect change and sustain it? And we would like you to share that with us on our Meditate the Vote Facebook or Twitter and let us know how you're feeling about the current political climate and what you would do to change it if you really could. And, all, and everything positive. And even if you feel like you're negative, please support it with something positive at the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us again. We're going to end today's show with my friend, Sanatam Kaur, as she ends us from her latest CD, which is uh, The Light of Nam. And this one is Wahe Guru. Take care, everyone. Right.